Hello everyone. Welcome to this course on AWS API Gateway. Now API Gateway is one of the most popular and widely used services in AWS. So uh, in this course we are going to learn uh, everything about API Gateway like uh, what it is and what are the use cases of API Gateway and uh, what are the some of the features of AWS API Gateway and uh, we'll also see how uh, the pricing model is and then we'll also uh, do some hands-on to build an uh, REST API using AWS API Gateway so that we get uh, you know more familiar with the service. Okay, so uh, let's get started. So let's see what is covered in this course. So firstly, we'll discuss what API Gateway is and then uh, we'll see what are the features of uh, AWS API Gateway and then uh, there are three API types that uh, we can create using AWS API Gateway which is REST, HTTP and WebSocket. So we are going to discuss about these three API types and we are going to compare these three and then uh, we are going to see the pricing model of uh, AWS API Gateway and then we'll in the end we'll do some hands-on and uh, create our first REST API using AWS API Gateway. Okay, so uh, let's get started. So firstly, I want to uh, introduce you to the concept of API Gateway if you are not familiar with it, uh, you know, it. So basically, uh, API Gateway is a server that acts as an intermediary between clients and backend services. Okay, so what does it mean? So let's imagine you have, uh, you're using an e-commerce application, right? Like Amazon or Flipkart, or Flipkart or whatever. So uh, in that like application, you will have various uh, services like orders, payments or profile. So uh, if let's assume the customer is using the mobile application and uh, he uh, like tries to access the orders like the list of orders that he has placed. Okay. Uh, now in the back end of the application, there are like microservices running uh, like, you know, uh, the orders microservice or payments or profile microservices. Okay. Each of this is a microservice which is uh, running on the uh, like back end services. Okay. When the client makes a request for uh, orders, there should be something in between which routes that request from the client to a particular microservice or like a backend service. Okay, so uh, that, uh, you know, middle man or you can call it as a door to your applications. So that door is called uh, API Gateway. I hope I was able to convey you uh, like in short, what is uh, the use of API Gateway in applications. Okay, so it basically uh, sits between the client applications like your mobile app or web app or any other applications and the microservices okay which is a backend so it handles all the tasks involved in accepting processing responding to the api calls so uh, the user makes a api call okay it accepts that api request and it forwards that request to a particular uh, appropriate uh, backend service and then it accepts the response from that service and forwards the response to back to the client. Okay, so that is what API Gateway does. Okay, I hope I was able to uh, make that concept clear. Okay, let's see what are the like, I mean, functions of uh, the API Gateway. So first thing, like we discussed, routing the request. So when there is a request, it routes that request to appropriate uh, backend service and then request and response transformation. So it can transform the request and send it to uh, the service or it can transform the response uh, from the service and send it in a proper format to the client. Okay, and it can also handle uh, authentication and authorization to your uh, services. So if someone uh, who doesn't have access to this particular service uh, or a particular uh, app makes a request, uh, it can block that. Okay, And it can also do rate limiting and throttling uh, like uh, it can uh, limit the uh, request made uh, by a particular client all that okay and it can also do uh, load balancing and then it can also uh, do a caching like uh, if there are multiple requests that are coming uh, instead of each time fetching the result it can cache that result and uh, return that result to the client so that it can be faster okay and then of course monitoring and logging so these are some of the main uh, functionalities like the functions of our api gateway server so uh, with that understanding of what API Gateway is, let's see what AWS API Gateway service does. Okay, uh, like in a nutshell, I can say that Amazon API Gateway is basically a managed service for API Gateway. Okay, so all these functions that we discussed in the previous slide. So these are the things that you will need to uh, set up in, if you're setting up your own API Gateway server, you will have to take care of all these functionalities uh, by yourself. Okay. So when you use AWS API Gateway, you can basically use this out of the box and uh, instantly build your APIs without uh, having to worry about all these functionalities because AWS comes, API Gateway uh, comes with all these things inbuilt. Okay. So that's what AWS API Gateway does for you. So it's an, uh, 
AWS service for creating, publishing, maintaining, monitoring, and securing your uh, REST, HTTP, and WebSocket APIs at any scale. So when they say at any scale, uh, it can basically automatically scale up and scale down, and it can uh, handle huge scale. Okay, so uh, so if we go with this diagram, so what this Amazon API Gateway sits be between your uh, users or clients and between your uh, backend applications. So uh, like we had discussed in the previous slide, your user can be uh, connected users, or streaming dashboards, web and mobile applications, IoT devices, or uh, any private applications. Okay, so uh, these are your clients, and in the backend, your applications can be running uh, anywhere. Uh, you can integrate it with uh, any AWS services, or you can also integrate with your I mean, private applications, which is running on VPC or on premise. Okay, so this Amazon API Gateway sits as a door between your clients and your backend services. So the advantage of using Amazon API Gateway is you can easily integrate it with any AWS service, most of the AWS services. Like if your application is running on EC2, you can easily uh, forward the request from API Gateway to an EC2 or a Lambda or Amazon Kinesis, etc. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's discuss some of the features of AWS API Gateway. So firstly, it supports uh, you building three kinds of uh, APIs, which is REST, HTTP, and WebSocket. So REST and HTTP are uh, stateless APIs and uh, WebSocket is a stateful uh, API. So we are going to discuss about these three in the next section. So, uh, but to uh, just to like remember, uh, AWS API Gateway supports three kinds of APIs. Okay, uh, and the next thing is, what are the security features of AWS API Gateway? So firstly, it, uh, you can implement your authentication mechanism, mechanism uh, in various ways. So you can implement AWS IAM authentication or uh, custom Lambda authorizer or you can use Amazon Cognito user pools to implement your security. Okay, and uh, you can also integrate uh, API Gateway with WAF to basically protect your application against uh, DDoS attacks. WAF is a uh, web application firewall uh, service by AWS, which is used to basically protect uh, applications against this DDoS attacks. Okay, so you can integrate your API Gateway with WAF to increase the security of your application. So next is monitoring. So you can monitor API usage and API changes using uh, Cloud Trail, and you can also uh, monitor your access and execution logging, and also you can set the alarms if the usage goes above a limit or something like that using CloudWatch. Okay, so that is a monitoring. So all this comes in built with API Gate. And uh, next feature is API lifecycle management. So you can uh, version your APIs or, and stages. So if you uh, want to do some changes you can uh, leave the prod version of your api running and then you can do some changes in dev test and then release the latest version of your api to prod uh, later okay uh, it basically uh, makes your life easy to uh, create version your apis and deploy your apis to stages okay and uh, so uh, like we discussed earlier you can integrate uh, this api gateway service with many backend uh, services okay so if your application is running on lambda or ec2 s3 like it, it you can basically it's like a plug and uh, play kind of a situation you can use uh, many aws services with api gateway in a very easy manner okay and uh, you can also use your custom domain names for your apis so we are going to see this as well uh, in some later video so uh, API Gateway supports uh, using your custom uh, domain names for your APIs, okay? And uh, also traffic management. Uh, so it, it offers throttling and request uh, response transformation and quota management to manage and control. So basically, if you have some uh, uh, users, you want to restrict uh, like the usage of a particular user uh, for like, let's say 100 API calls or something like that, you can do that using API case and all that using traffic management. So we are going to see all these things in uh, coming hands-on tutorials, okay? And uh, another feature is caching. So it uh, supports the response caching to reduce backend load and improve API performance. So if your uh, user is making repeated API requests, same, so you can cache that response and uh, send it back to the client so that you know the response time is quicker and it also reduces the load on uh, backend services, okay? So these are some of the important features of uh, Amazon API Gateway. This is not an exhaustive list. There are a lot of other features as well, which we are going to like see when we are building the APIs hands on. So uh, the next thing is we'll try to compare these three type of APIs that we can create using uh, Amazon API Gateway. So uh, there is HTTP API, uh, the REST API and WebSocket APIs. So these are the three type of APIs that you can create using Amazon API, uh, Amazon API Gateway. 
so firstly what is http apis api so uh, sorry so it's basically uh, it's it's like a restful api you can build a very simple restful api uh, which uh, has a very lower latency and low cost than rest apis so this comes with a very basic uh, kind of feature set so uh, like it doesn't have things like uh, uh, let's say custom authorizer and many other things so if you want to build a very simple http endpoint uh, restful api you can use this http api so uh, the rest api is basically uh, it's it comes with the uh, additional features at the cost of uh, extra cost and latency what are those additional features so you can have your custom authorizers uh, like lambda and all those things so you can have uh, security uh, implemented like uh, WAF we discussed in the previous stage so WAF you can use it to prevent D DDoS attacks on your applications and uh, it comes with uh, you can have your API case so using API case you can manage the quotas like if you have a particular user who you want to limit access to like let's say this user can access our application only like let's say 10 times so we will give a API key to that user uh, which has that you know quota and everything defined okay so uh, that is additional feature and uh, yep so those are the additional features that you get uh, when you build a rest api instead of http api so uh, just to clarify bo using both you can build restful apis but uh, this http api doesn't give you all these uh, features okay but uh, the advantage is that you can build uh, you know very uh, good restful apis with at a very lower cost compared to this rest api so you can uh, like decide which type of api you want to use based on your business and use case okay so next is websocket api so uh, this is basically a stateful uh, api where the state is remembered like i mean uh, an example can be your uh, real time uh, chat applications or something right so where you establish a connection between the client and server and uh, the client and server can send uh, messages bidirectionally okay so that is what a websocket api is so the applications are like use cases are chat applications and live notifications and all those things so uh, this websocket api is a stateful api and these two are uh, stateless apis because uh, if like i mean the, if the same user is making a two requests that like between those two requests the state is not maintained okay so each request is treated as a separate whereas in the case of websocket api uh, we establish a connection and that connection stays alive until that user is connected to the API and uh, there can be a bi-directional communication between the client and server using WebSocket API. Okay, so uh, that is the difference between these three types. I hope I was able to uh, convey that difference properly. Uh, if you did not understand it completely, that's still fine. Uh, you will understand it when we are uh, like actually building the APIs. Then you will understand what is the difference between these three. Okay. Now uh, let's discuss the pricing model of Amazon API Gateway. Okay, so uh, this is basically kind of a serverless uh, model where you only pay when your APIs are in use. Okay, you don't pay when uh, no one is using your APIs. So uh, each of these three types of APIs are priced differently. So let's see what it does. So firstly, the free tier. So uh, like if you created your AWS account recently for 12 months, you will be your account will be eligible for free tier. So under free tier, you can make uh, 1 million API calls per month free for each, I mean, in HTTP API. And for REST APIs, it's 1 million API, it's the same. And for WebSocket, you can uh, have like 1 million messages and uh, 7,50,000, like 750K connection minutes per month, okay? So these are the free tier uh, limits for your account, okay? Uh, so after free tier, uh, you will have to pay like uh, this much. So for first 300 million requests, it's $1. And after uh, 300 million uh, requests, it's be like 0.9 uh, dollar per 300 million request. Okay, so when we say uh, requests, like I mean, these are metered using 512 KB increments. So if you are uh, like requests uh, are like like say 1024 one uh, kilobytes, it will be considered as two requests. Okay, so uh, it is in uh, increments of 512 KB. And uh, for REST APIs, uh, if you see, like this is the chart we have for first three thirty million, uh, there are three and a half dollars. So if you see, there it's this is uh, significantly uh, costlier than uh, HTTP APIs. But uh, like we discussed, this comes this flavor of API comes with uh, additional features like security and all those things that we discussed in the previous slide. Okay, so this is the pricing uh, for this one, and uh, for WebSocket APIs. Uh, 
uh, this is the pricing we have and uh, for WebSocket messages are metered in 32 KB increments. So if you have like a 33 KB message, then it will be considered as two messages. Okay. So this is the pricing model for uh, API gateway and uh, it's it's I would say it's not very costly but you have to be careful when you are building your application uh, and you need to continuously monitor and set alarms for your uh, application so that you don't uh, end up you know spending a lot. So yeah that was a very uh, brief overview about the Amazon API gateway service. I hope, I hope uh, you were able to get a picture of like I mean what API gateway service is and where it fits into your applications. So uh, next let's uh, go on and create a REST API in AWS and see how it works.